for parent and family resource. This presentation is Children are Reflectors in a Family. Aloisa discusses how children reflect the unhealed emotional injuries of their parents and expose issues that are out of harmony with love and the family dynamic. Aloisa introduces the concept that every event in life is an opportunity to learn more about love and truth from God's perspective. Presented on the 4th of March 2021 at 11.30am in Wilkesdale, Queensland, Australia. Children as Reflectors Children reflect their environment. By the environment, I'm speaking about the, I suppose, the atmosphere and the environment that a parent creates and the children grow up in. So not the natural environment, but, you know, your home environment. Or it could be a school environment or wherever you're at, you know, that kind, that kind of environment. And children are these perfect, they're like little barometers. They, they can help you to see what's really going on in your family if you're humble enough to actually observe and listen to them and also look at yourself in comparison to what's happening or the behavior is or actions or you know or illnesses or whatever is happening in your home life and children I feel they reflect their parents like so perfectly also when other adults come into the environment they also reflect reflect them as well the main influence is the parents you know the actual parent but you know say if you've adopted a child really really young then they'll also reflect you a lot as well because you would have had a lot of influence on that soul. Again, if one parent spends more time than another parent with a child, well, they may have more influence over that child and the child may reflect more strongly those um, certain qualities in you know, the single parent home, if you like. But they will still have inherited certain things from both mother and father. Um, and that's biological parents as well as the caregivers in their lives. And if you take the stance or the approach that anything that happens to you is a, an attraction event or a trigger of an event to help expose certain emotions that you can learn and grow more in love, then does it really matter where it came from? Or does it more matter of like, okay, I can learn something about love here? And I think that's an attitude that I would like to foster in these, you know, and I'll sort of speak more about is if you have an attitude that you want to love then it's not really about anybody else anymore it's about you and if you really want to love you will do everything in your that you possibly can in order that you become a more loving person and also what you will do is you will uphold an environment of love and I feel like that is a responsibility of a parent is that as the parent or the um, you know governor of your home if you like um, you actually have a responsibility to uphold love. So if your children are fighting and punching each other, I think you've got a responsibility to go, hold on, this isn't ethical and you know that's one way to learn about what love is. This is unloving and I now need to actually put in, you know, to expose and, and show that this is not a loving thing to do. So how am I going to make God's laws transparent? And for example, you could, you know, um, restrict a child in a sense by just holding them and letting them, you know, go through their rage and their, their anger. And obviously, you know, punching someone is, you're pretty angry and you feel that being violent to somebody is acceptable. And it's okay. Now, for a child to act in a violent manner, there must be some opening in the parents, either an overt agreement with it that, you know, one or both parents feels like, yep, violence is completely okay and under certain circumstances it's okay to be violent. Or there might just be a feeling of, you know, violent rage to a different gender and that gender feels like they can attack the other gender, you know, and punch them. Or it might be that you just have an acceptance to violence. You may have had a lot of violence in your childhood or in your, you know, as you grew up, and you may just be open to being violently treated. And all of those things may be, um, you know, happen in your home. So as a concrete example, in our home, the, our boys would punch me, you know, punch me in, in, uh, in my my chest and, and breast area and also like just sort of they just attack me often and at first I just sort of like would sit there and let them do it and it you know I was quite open to violence in, and accepting violence in my home and my ex-husband was also like kind of fine with you know uh, violent treatment he never was uh, physically violent but he he's you know there's an emotional uh, acceptance that it's okay for boys to sort of act in that way in that manner 
And it was via me, you know, just holding the boys and going through a process and they would like, you know, they would try and punch and hit and bite and kick me and all kinds of stuff. And over a period of time, they went through that and, uh, and they'd finally get to a point where they would sort of like um, get to their grief, if you like, and have a really good cry about what was going on or they'd sort of just uh, relax. And when I say relax, it was like the feeling changed from being aggressive and violent and then they'd um, just dissipate and get sort of to their grief place. They had some blocks to actually feeling grief. So sometimes they get to that place but not fully feel their grief. But the um, holding them was a way for them to allow their emotional expression. For me to be, you know, when you're holding a, a child who's having a massive tantrum, it's very confronting and it brought up a lot of emotions for me as well. And it was the fastest and quickest way to make God's laws transparent to the children um, that, you know, hitting another person is a violent act and it's not okay. We did, I did it so rapidly, the fact that it was like a hit and it was just held immediately that there was no confusion in their mind about why they were doing it. It wasn't a punishment. It was to teach and educate them about love. And that was a, yeah, that changed our family dynamic a lot. And over a period of a few weeks, um, they stopped actually hitting me and they stopped hitting others because they knew that, no, hold on, that's, that's, that is not a loving act to do. Like, that, that is wrong. And I was transparent with them about that. And also I spoke to them about, you know, as they become adults, that there's other ways to deal with your anger and there's another, other ways to deal with y your emotions and your feelings. And attacking someone when you're an adult is actually called assault. And that, you know, you can go to jail for that and just talk to them about like the consequences of what, what, what went on. Not in a punishing way, just as an educational way of like, this is the reality if you want to continue this behavior. And yeah, it was just quite interesting how it changed. And, you know, there's now different dynamics in our family. So though that the hitting sort of stopped, there was still then this emotional sort of violence, like underhanded, undercutting people and pulling them down and all these kind of things. And that's a different form of violence. And so, you know, again, you can hold a child and um, restrict them from harming another person, make it very explicit that that's what's going on, and you can work through that. Now, two things to that, though. That is dealing with the child and making the laws explicit to the child. But you as the parent, obviously, the, you, you overtly agree with what's happening with the child and that you agree with violence or you're open to receiving violence, so you also agree with violence just in a different way. You might not agree with people being violent to others, but if they're violent to you, you accept it. Or if they're violent to another person, you don't speak up and you don't say anything. So those are now the parents' issues of love. And you've got to remember, like we're talking about children as reflectors. Children are just reflecting the adults in the environment. And so that means that both of the adults in the family need to look at and work through their emotional feelings and their true feelings about violence and people being violent to each other and do they think it's okay for men to be violent to women do they think it's okay for women to be violent to men do they think it's okay to be violent under certain circumstances for anybody what are your true beliefs and your honest beliefs about violence and if you don't work through those sadly that you know even if the child goes through the entire emotions they're likely to you know because their environment still condones violence then they're going to still think, well, okay, under certain circumstances, violence is okay. So this is why if as the adult, so, you know, let's do a different scenario. If you as the adult know you've had that feeling, your child's very, very small and you realize, you hold on, I know that under certain circumstances, I think violence is okay. Gosh, you know, and you do the work, the emotional work to work through all of the reasons why. And you, you know, if you've been violently treated as a child and you work through all your grief and your sadness about that and you work through it you will come to a point where you no longer will accept that violence is okay in your heart. You'll know in your heart, like, no, violence isn't, un isn't loving. Um, and you'll have this feeling of like, I don't accept violence and I don't think it's okay. And you'd probably speak up under, you know, if it was happening and things like that. Now, if you had that feeling um, before a child is born, when they come in, I doubt that they would act out violently in your presence ever. Doesn't mean they might not get angry about things. Like it depends on what subject and ha how much work you've done and you know ha what your condition of love is of what they're going to reflect. But yeah, if you don't have that opening, they're not going to reflect it. So I've noticed, for instance, some people don't think it's okay for them to be treated badly. Like in the sense of, you know, they just have this feeling of like, no, I'm absolutely not okay with being abused. And that person very rarely gets abused. You know, they, they just don't. 
when I say that, I'm, I'm talking about an adult here, like I, I've got sort of friends and, and um, even some people who were hurt as children, but they have this feeling of like, no, that was wrong. They did the wrong thing to me. Whereas there's other people who have been abused and they feel like, well, I deserved it. I must have done something wrong. And they're always looking for the reason why they were somehow responsible for this bad treatment from another person. And those are two different feelings. So obviously those, those kids have had two different um, uh, experiences in their life. You know, one, you know, thinks, yep, abuse is okay. And, you know, I should accept it. And the other one is like, no, like, even if it happens to me, that's not okay. And those, those are things that if you have a solid feeling in your heart, that will be transferred to the child. Now, often two parents have completely like different emotional sets. Like they've had different experiences. They've had unique things happen to them. They're open to some things, not open to others. So then you get like this whole, it's like such an interesting mix. And there's a whole discovery process that will need to go on in your family of like, well, you know, sometimes what's being reflected by what child? And Again, if you take the attitude of like, okay, what is it reflecting for me? What's going on for me here? You'll always learn something more about love and you'll always be able to see something. And you'll become sensitive to what your issues are and what your partner's issues are or what the other adults in the environment's issues are. That's a re a just a natural result of becoming more emotionally sensitive to things and working through your own things is that you start like your own gear. You start oh, emotional issues, I should say, using these slang words for it. Um, so gear meaning emotional issues or, or um, beliefs or, you know, things that are going on in you. And the more that you work through those things, then the more you can actually recognize when people have similar issues to yourself. They're probably not exactly the same, but they might be similar. And you can also start recognizing when certain things are happening to you from another person. You know, if you've been in close contact with someone, you learn a lot about the other person as well. And I love that. I think it's wonderful to know someone on a soul level rather than just an intellectual level because you start to know the real them. And I often comment to people now that when you're truthful and you're, you know, you're really transparent about things, you get to know a person much, much quicker and you get to know them a lot better and more, um, you're closer and more connected faster than, say, in the past when I used to just have facade-based relationships where we just sort of talked about nothing or it wasn't really very important. And, you know, you talk about the weather, but you never get to know the person. And the more that you feel, feel your own feelings and you come to understand yourself and everything, then the more sensitive you also become to others. And I feel that at some point I'll get to a point where I probably don't even know, need to ask someone how they feel because I'll already be feeling them enough that I already know. Um, and that would be a pretty cool, I feel like that's a bit of a superpower uh, that happens when your soul develops to a point in love. And I feel like it's a loving provision that, when we are injured or we, we have unloving feelings towards others that we can't do that because otherwise we probably, you know, abuse that, that gift that, that happens when we become more sensitive. But anyway, it's a bit of an aside. <laughs> when you see children as reflectors rather than their behavior or what they're doing as some personal affront or attack on yourself, you can start to understand a lot more about the family dynamics and what's going on. I know when I first began the process of, I suppose, self-discovery, you could say, and learning about what, what it meant to be a real parent, like a parent from God's perspective. As I said, that's an ongoing process for me. I think at the beginning, I used to associate the behavior with the child and, and I used to sort of take it quite personally. I've talked to a number of other mothers and fathers who feel that their children's behavior is a reflection upon themselves. And often other parents and other adults are uh, quite judging of other parents. And, you know, they, they, when a child acts out and is loud and wild and ba behaves bad, badly, often the parents, you know, feel sort of bad and things like that. And in a way, I can see that, like, kind of have created it. So there are going to be some feelings of feeling bad about it. But the judging yourself or other people judging you, I, I don't think that's he like helpful under any circumstance. And I've been there. Like I know what it's like to have completely wild, out of control children who really like people are judging you all the time and not being very kind and saying mean things behind your back and all these kind of things. And I know what that experience is like. And I also know that part of the... Uh, guilty feelings or the, the shame sort of feelings I had, I can understand those too because I did do the wrong thing and I 
wasn't being loving and all of those things, but judgment never helped anybody. And the less we judge, but the more we can just honestly look at what's happening in our family and how we have contributed to what's going on, the less invested you'll become with your child's, you know, behaving in a certain way, the more you'll just go, all right, here we go again. And I notice often children like play up in public or sometimes it's the opposite. They only play up in private. And that's just another reflection for the parent, you know, like I know sometimes, you know, the kids, kids will say things in public and certain families and the parents are just, you know, like wild and so upset with the child because they've publicly shared things they didn't want shared. And that's just a, an opportunity for you to look at why you don't want to be truthful and transparent in the world. And really, if you didn't have emotions attached to it, would it really matter what your child said to anybody? Um, in my, uh, my experience, not really. Like, I mean, the only reason why you wouldn't be truthful and transparent with someone is they're going to be abusive or use it to somehow try and attack and harm you. You'd still be yourself. You just might not share every detail about yourself. Because if someone's going to treat you badly, then, you know, you'd learn that pretty rapidly and you might not share it. But in saying that, you know, punishing a child for being truthful and transparent, that's not so good. I would take the stance more of looking at, okay, why do I feel, you know, upset about that? And if I did, then, you know, be honest about that in the moment rather than sort of taking it out on your child. I notice now when children behave, you know, in certain ways, there's not the sort of feeling that somehow it's a reflection on me anymore. I more see it as like an educational opportunity for myself to find out some more things about myself. When I say that, it is a reflection on me if it's our, our kids in the sense of there's something in me that they're reflecting, but I don't take it as personally and I don't want to change the child's behavior just so I don't have to feel a feeling. Um, so I want to be very clear about that. So the child is, so if it's, if say it's the child in my care, they are reflecting me. I have something to learn from that. But there comes this shift where you don't take it personally, the child's behavior. You just see it as for what it is. Like, okay, here's an opportunity for me to learn something. They're trying to reflect something back at me. And then simultaneously as me dealing with that thing, I also need to go, is this behavior loving or unloving? If it's unloving, how am I going to take a loving action in order to help correct it? And if it's unloving, um, and if it's loving, then, um, and I'm just feeling uncomfortable with a loving behavior, well, that's just on me. I've got to deal with it. And also, you know, say to the child, look, you know, this is great that you're doing. So for instance, speaking up and being honest, to me, that's a wonderful quality in a child. And I would always encourage them to do that. But if you have a feeling of like, oh no, this is a bad thing, the child's going to feel that. And, you know, that's something that you then need to work through. Because being honest and transparent is, is wonderful. And a lot of the time kids get um, yeah, quite heavily punished or pulled down for doing that. Or, you know, a lot of other kids call them like dibber dobbers or whatever. I don't see a problem with someone sharing information. But when you have a feeling of, you know, and sometimes obviously people have used information in an unloving manner. But instead of us just grieving that, you know, and then learning the more grief we worked through about you'd, you'd learn who you could trust and who you couldn't. And that's a skill that children need to do as well. Like that's, it's something that they can learn of being themselves and being truthful and transparent, but, you know, sharing yourself with someone who's going to be, you know, abuse that, well, then that wouldn't be loving to you, would it? And you'd just say to that person, well, I don't want to share with you because, you know, you're not going to be loving with me about that issue. Children are reflectors in the family, and this is a wonderful opportunity as parents to learn all kinds of wonderful things about ourselves and for children to learn things and to make transparent um, you know what love and God's laws as well so take it for what it is it's a reflection to you to learn something more about love so as a principle you know everything that occurs to you in your life is something for you to learn about love anything that happens to you in your life is an opportunity for you to learn something about love and truth and this is a wonderful opportunity for all adults, all parents, all children. And there's always an opportunity to learn more about love. And if you have an attitude of that, you, you know, and take that principle on board, then you'll start to have a different view of the world. And rather than seeing things as such um, a personal, say, affront or feeling offended about things, you'll just go, oh, here's another opportunity for me to learn more about love. And that might be love of self, love of others, love of God 
love of the environment or where you're not loving yourself, where you're not loving others, where you're not loving the environment, where you're not loving God. And all of those, um, you know, there's just so much opportunity in that. And this is a wonderful gift that comes by having children is having them reflect all of these things. They're like another little mini feedback system. So I've talked like a number of feedback systems, like you've got God's laws, there's external feedback from people who are more loving than you. There is children, uh, wonderful feedback systems. They can't necessarily eloquently tell you what is wrong, but they're showing you all the time. And if you're sensitive to your own feelings, you'll be able to figure out what's going on for you quite rapidly. Again, that takes you know, time and effort and, and a sensitization process. It doesn't happen overnight, but over a period of time, um, you, know, you can get there. With it is, it is kind of feels like, I suppose it's hard work. It's not necessarily physically going out and toiling in your garden with your, your spade, but it is some um, soul work and development that needs to occur in order for you to get to that place. But uh, yeah, that sort of in summary, children are reflectors, and if you can start seeing them as such, rather than blaming them, then you'll learn a lot of wonderful things about yourself and your family.